my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Ifoma. I'm a fashion designer and a pattern dress maker. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this outfit. I wore this dress for my birthday shoot and it's a very conventional dress that can be worn this way or this way and either way you're still going to be killing you to be killing your game <laughs> I do have more pictures and video of this outfit on my Instagram page and if you want to hit me up for business the link is going to be in the description box below my snap page is also going to be there so if you also want to say hi the comment section is open to your suggestion your questions and your thoughts don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe it will mean the world to me subscription is free of course without further ado let's jump right into this tutorial so before we start anything i'm going to show you guys the fabric and yes i do have four yards of satin fabric i also purchased lining of about five yards to that this is the two fabric we're going to be using and what color is what color will i call this it's not yellow and it's more like lemon color so yes you could see that it's like a lot of pieces like cut out cut out cut out this is because i wanted to make movements like carrying this about easy and i just put them in separate nylons and i was able to carry it you could see that different color over there i was planning on using that to do something but at the end of the day i didn't use it moving forward you could see my pet coat and i'm basically going to be using this um for my under skirt yes so i'm going to be wearing this under the dress i took the measurement from the waistline down to um the floor length so i'm going to be laying the satin fabric down and folding it like so in like a shape of a triangle this will enable us cut out a 90 degree flare we are also going to start from the tip there from the top line we're going to be using a length of 12 inches note that this length will differ according to your height and i'm using this just so i could achieve my hip measurement on this 90 degree flare so basically i'm using my hip measurement because i'm going to be having an elastic attached to the bottom part of this kit so with the help of my chalk i'm just you know shading all of that in place right now i'm going over to get the length of my you know base which is also this kit and this length also divides according to your own height and you need to work with your own measurement so i'm just going in with the length of how i want the skirts to be note guys we're going to be cutting two pieces of this 90 degree flare and as we proceed you're going to see what i'm talking about once I'm done marking all of that in place with my chalk, I'm going in with my scissors and I'm just going to cut that. Done with all the cutting and you should have a 90 degree flare, something that looks like this. We're going to be cutting another piece of this 90 degree flare and I'm basically laying my satin fabric in place and this one will be easier i just have to place the previous one we cut on top of the new one we're about to cut and we don't really have to do any measurements and all of that i go in with my scissors and i just cut 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 Now we're off to our dress form and I'm basically going to be showing you a practical example of what I mean by um, 290 degree flare which is going to leave us with 180 degree flare. So I'm basically pinning one half of um, our flare and the other half in front. So this is what it looks like after we pinned and I'm basically going to be sewing the side, just one part of the side 
and I think we're good. should have something that looks like this so this is our 180 degree flare which is also our half circle flare now we're going over to cut our um our layers and i'm just measuring out seven yards initially i did eight yard but then i took out one yard and i'm just basically going to cut that so you're going to continue this process for almost for like about 100 yards of two because this is what we're going to be using to cut our layers and you know all these layers that you see here i'm sure by now you guys already know the routine because i feel like this is no new to the channel because we've done this for our previous video some of our previous video which i'm also going to be leaving in the description box below so right now i'm just going to be trying to cut our layers and i'm folding there like so the measurement i'm using for the first layer is 25 inches and this first layer is going to be attached to the body of the dress the second layer is going to be um, I, I did um, 20 inches for the second layer and then the third layer is also 25 inches so take notes guys this measurement will differ according to your height so we continue cutting and cutting i'm just trying to lay this nice and you know clean so that our layers doesn't get rough or easy to work with the other small part is about 12 inches and we're still going to be working with that we're still going to be using that part and i'm going to be showing you where we're going to add that you know short shorter parts that we cut out i'm going to show you guys where we're going to be adding it so you're going to continue this by cutting all of this for all the layers so you do this for about more than 100 yards of fabric and don't forget that you're going to be cutting the upper bodies so you're going to leave some part of the two to cut the upper bodies so this is just me repeating the same process over and over again and this is also going to be you when you want to do this but just take note of your measurements when you're doing this Now I'm just going to proceed and show you guys what it looks like. This is the 12 inches, which is a short one. We also have um, our 25 inches, and then you are also going to have some cutouts that which is going to be um, 20 inches, and then you know, just keep those measurements down. So I'm just going to drop this here. If you're in the height of 5'8, 5'9, and 5'10 this is totally fine for you i'm just going to show you guys how i also achieved this ruffles nest up and yes i'm sure from my other videos you've probably seen this technique but i'm just going to show you guys one more time again so i'm going to be laying four layers of two like so and i have my first layer this is the second one i'm going in with my third layer
and now I have my foot layer and basically I'm just going to be pinning each of these layers together so I'm pinning one two three and four together and I continue pinning till you know I get to the end of this seven yards so the length of this is 25 and the width which is the, the width of the um, this two fabric is seven yards so you guys already know we've done this hand technique for you know even when we're doing the Kendall Jenner dress also you can also use your um, if you have an industrial machine where you could attach your ruffle footer you could also use your ruffle footer and just you know stitch this I do have a tabletop machine and I do not have an industrial machine which have the um, ruffle foot that will be able to do as much gathers as this so that's why I'm going I'm going with the manual method of using my hand and needle and thread as you stay tuned to the end of this video you're just going to be seeing the whole process of you know making the dress And that's how I was doing this to any particular people. <laughs> so I just had to proceed to um, using my natural light and continue pinning. So I'm almost at the end of um, pinning the whole seven yards. So when I'm done pinning the whole seven yards, I'm going to go in with my needle and thread. Here I have my thread and I'm just going to be passing my thread into my needle. Once I'm done with that, I'm just going to be running a straight hand stitch on the part that we have our pins, which is the four layers. So basically, this is just a straight hand stitch and when you pull it, you're going to have this gather effect and yes, so you're going to do this method for most, <laughs> I mean all of the layers. Just for clarity's sake, we added four to, you know, four to cut out, which is a mesh, or you call it net fabric. We added them together, we pinned them, and now we're going to be hand stitching them to have this gathers effect. The length of the thread should be about um, two yards. So once you get to the end, you're just going to pull your thread out like so and you have your needle all fresh and you could do continue this method for 
you know all the rest of the layers and you're going to have things looking like this so you have multiple layers and i'm going to be showing you guys the placement of you know all of these layers we've gathered so we have our 180 degree flare which is two pieces of our 90 degree flare we joined together and now remember the 12 inches um little piece we had now we're going to be starting with that and we're going to be adding that to the bottom of our um flare so guys i just want to set this record straight if you do see my hair or the fabric or my clothes flying i do have a fan <laughs> facing me directly a standing fan yes so i'm going to proceed to pin um the layers to our flare and i'm just going to pin this all round i pin i arrange and i ensure everything is in place and all nice and cute when i get to that joining over there i'm just going to trim and try to lap the one layer on top of the other one To be honest you want to take your time to do this like really take your time to arrange and pin you're going to be having excess at the tip which is also okay and i'm going in with my chalk just to um mark that line so that when i'm stitching even when my pin is out i'll still be able to sew that in took this to my sewing machine to sew and we're going to be sewing you know where we have our pins and I took like I said at the tip you're going to be having SS which is totally fine I am going to leave three inches from the beginning over there and this is for us to be able to join um, this piece together when we're done so basically you're just going to be watching me sew this all the way to the end and yes moving forward to um adding our nest layer and i'm measuring 25 inches from over there to the bottom and using my chalk i'm just basically going to be marking all those lines down By now I'm sure you guys are familiar with the whole process. I'm just going to be laying all this down, you know, the 25 inches length we gathered. And I'm just putting this in place just so I know how many pieces I'm going to be joining together. And now I'm just going to take my time, I arrange and then I pin. I do this till I get to the other end of, you know, our flounce or our flare whichever one you choose to call it note guys one of this um gathers is seven yards um with four layers of two and we have over there on this layer on this um first part of this layer we're having three pieces of that
proceed to the sewing machine and you guys already know the drill we're going to leave three inches um, to join our side seam and then we'll proceed to just sewing from one end to the other end note on the other end also you're going to be leaving three inches for joining this together moving forward to the other layer and um, basically i'm just going to mark 14 inches from that top line to where we had our previous layer and with the help of my chalk i'm just going to be marking that line down and proceeding to getting um the next layer which is um 20 inches of length and i'm just going to be placing each and every one of the piece i want to add on that layer down and with the routine the usual routine which i just pin and put everything in place i think i'll be saying and um, and um, too much you guys will have to forgive me <laughs> so i take this to my sewing machine and of course i'm going to leave three inches for my side seam you know closing up the side seam and sewing this to the other end and also leaving three inches on the other end of this flounce or flare she have something that looks like this i'm going to put this in the mannequin to give you guys a very good visual representation of what it looked like with the petticoats so yeah i'm just basically going in with my pin just to hold the waistline together on the dress form The dress is already coming alive now we need to close up the side seam and once you're done closing up the side seam by 0.5 inches you're going to be having you know openings which you ha also have to fill or close with the excess um layer we have and right now i'm just basically stitching this layer remember the excess i was talking about we leave out at the tip i'm just going to be lapping this and stitching for each layer of this and this thing broke so many of my needles i use like more than a pack of needle to sew this dress so you're going to be seeing me change needle maybe once in a while and i'm just going to trim 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 that off and continue closing up the side now we're going forward to our pattern piece and basically this is going to be looking like we're drafting a corset but it is not and you guys already know that on that boss corset we did so i'm taking from my under bust i'm just connecting that line up like so and trying to just get a very nice curve with my hand and my pencil so guys the link to this pattern is going to be in the description box and you could check that out and i'm going down by one inch over there and uh, on the waistline and i'm connecting with my ruler on the waistline so basically i know for a fact that not everybody uses a natalie babe for this pattern and which is totally fine you could also interpret this in whatever way you know how to you know cut your bodies or make your bodies and you can also be be very very creative with this and bring up your own design or come up with your own style yes so i'm just basically making panels on these um bodies because we're going to be doing an inbuilt corset i don't know if you guys remember when we did an inbuilt corset if you follow my channel when we did the bridal tutorial we did an inbuilt corset on that bridal dress the link is going to be in the description box if you want to check that out also so yes i'm just basically going to be cutting off you know what is not needed the dots the side and just so we could get our actual pattern that we're going to be working with so it is very important you label your pattern to your understanding so you don't mix up you know your front panel or your front pattern with your back pattern 
and all of that i'm going in to cut this i think i will not be needing that that space so right now just before i slash you know the panels for the corsets the inbuilt corset i'm going to be cutting the base and i'm using this my shining face satin and i'm cutting at half of an inch sewing allowance and you could see i don't really need a chalk to you know get my half inch i'm so used to cutting that i know where my half inch is now i could cut on half inch without having to measure if you notice that i'm cutting something that looks like white and that's basically my you, they call it wording or you could call it breast pad and i'm using this to give my pattern piece um cut out for the front bust shape so i'm just basically going to be sewing all of that together and i did that only for the bust parts which look like a corset and i'm basically going to be stitching all my things in place my pattern piece in place now i'm going to be cutting out my panel and i'm basically going to be laying my panel down on my lining because i said it's an inbuilt corset so the um, boning is going to be on the lining not on the fabric or your actual base done cutting all my piece and i'm going to proceed to my sewing machine i already ironed sd on my lining just just to keep it firm yes and i'm basically going to be joining all my piece together all the piece except the bust cut So here is what it looks like and we pressed our seam down and it's looking <laughs> it's looking sumptuous guys this is our breast cut this is our boning we're going to be using i'm basically going to be cutting out the actual length of the boning we want to insert and what i'm trying to do is just going to be creating my boning case over there this is by stitching on the seam line because the boning we are going to be working with is not a sew on boning you can't sew on this particular boning you only insert it into you know your corset Once you're done inserting your boning into your boning case, you're just going to be joining this two piece together. And our lining piece is complete. It looks so nice. Already, we're moving forward to draping on the main body of the dress and i'm starting off by draping the um bust parts so i proceeded to just sit in and getting comfortable and draping all of that you're going to be needing lots of pins guys lots and lots of pins After draping all of this to my satisfaction, I'm going in with my scissors and I'm going to be trimming off where I have excess fabric before I go ahead with my needle and thread. And with my needle and thread, what I'm basically going to be doing, I'm just going to be stitching each lines of where I have my draping just so my draping stays in place to the base of the fabric. I'm 
don't drape in this part it looks so so good i am going to give this a good press and proceed to the other part of you know the top part of our bodies so now i'm going over to drape this part after draping you guys already know what comes after draping we trim off the excess fabric after trimming off we're just going to be hand sewing um this piece together which is we're going to be sewing the draping so the draping stays in place after all of that you have something that looks like this and we're going to be joining this two piece together so now i've joined this two piece together it's time to join the side and we're going to be joining the two side together you're going to cut a full flare which is going to be for the base the tutorial on how to cut a full flare which is a 360 flare is going to be in the description box so you could check that out and i'm basically just going to be opening one end of the full flare which is our 360 flare 360 degree flare and i'm going to be joining this to the bottom base of our bodies with the help of the sewing machine we're going to be joining this two piece together and mind you the length of the flare is actually 25 inches and the width is going to be your waist measurement then with all of that you have something that looks like this now i'm going to be adding um the length of this gathers i'm adding is the length is actually 2.5 inches and for the width you could use one yard or you could use one and half yard proceeding forward we're going to be joining the upper bodies to um one layer of the dress which is going to be like the bottom half of you know the dress done with all of that we're going to be joining our lining right side facing the bodies of our dress and i'm just going to be stitching the top line After stitching, I wore this dress on my dress form just to be able to, you know, see how far our process is or how far we've gone. I'm going in by 4 inches of length and the width is my hip measurement for my band. So basically, I'm just basically going to be using an elastic, which is going to be my waist size of elastic. And I'm stitching at half of an inch. I left about two inches. This will help me close up this band I'm trying to create. And basically, I'm just going to close that up at half inches also. I insert my elastic into the band. And after inserting my elastic into the band, I'm just going to be closing up the open space also after inserting the elastic but first of all i'm going to close up my elastic by joining with a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine now i also ran a top stitch on you know this elastic band and basically the top stitch i just sewed in between um the lines like you can see in the video you're going to see a lot of fraying here this is because the satin fabric and the lining was absolutely fraying a lot so i'm joining the band with the lining and our main satin base together and i'm stitching on half of an inch or you could stitch on the exact same line we used to you know initially fold the band so this will take a lot of time because this um base or the skirt 
is really really heavy So there's actually a lot of rain and we're going to be weaving this so do not worry about the rain. It was kind of hard to weave because it had a lot of layers that it had to weave but at the end of the day we got the job done and this skirt was over the place like it was literally covering the machine like you could see. Oh, we were able to weave that and stitch that in place looking all nice and neat so that's the joining we have over there closing up the 90 degree flare moving forward we're going to be doing this loop and it's pretty easy to make if you watch my video even the bridal tutorial you know I do this method a lot and like I said the link is going to be in the description box below so you can check that out i also weaved the lining to avoid avoid fraying i'm just going to turn this around and you're just going to see the lining parts and it's coming out pretty well actually i am yet to close up some parts so I'm just going to be closing up where I added my loop and we'll be joining a zip to the lower parts. This is just going to be, you know, the zip is something different and I don't think we've done this on this channel like adding loop and a zip. So moving forward, I am going to be closing up where I have my loop and cutting off the tip then turning this inside out you're going to have your loop looking all nice like that I went ahead to change my foot to the zipper footer and i'm going to be joining my zip to the lower part of this dress now i'm just going to use the lining to also join you know to the zip and so it has this very nice clean seamless effect i'm going to be showing you guys what i'm talking about now here's what i'm talking about about the zip it's looking all nice and you know this is the loop the rope we're going to use to tie at the back and that's our invisible zip so i'm just going to zip that up next up i'm trying to make the sleeve and i'm sewing with a straight stitch and i'm just basically going to be pulling that to create a gathers effect and once i'm done with that i'm going to secure the end after securing the end i'm going in with my machine to just you know run a top stitch again then before i go in with my elastic so this measurement differs according to your wrist measurement and your round arm measurement. So you're going to be working with that. So mind you, I saw two inches, um, I started sewing from two inches away from the tip of this net. So just keep note of that. Now I'm going in to check you know how stretchy my elastic band is and I'm going to be flipping this to continue sewing you know with the other side of the flare just basically repeating the same step but with a different measurement
so you're going to be folding your sleeve into two just to basically close up the side seam of your sleeve all done with all of that i'm just basically going in with my scissors and trimming off all the excess fabric we have so I'm going to Here. <laughs> I could wear this to church, like I could wear this out to church, literally. I just use this pink one just to um to test it. I'm gonna list it up. I've not even tied it very well. It's still it's still free. So if they help me to tie very well, I'm sure it will come out well. Then let me now try this with my afro hair. And here is what the finished look looks like. Do let me know your thoughts on this outfit and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't like comment share and do all of those cute things until then i'll see you in my next video